So which ink should we be using, dye or pigment? Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. So today is part of the basics series that I've been doing and we're going to be looking at if we should be using dye and pigment inks and what are the main differences between the two. But before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe. Just click that subscribe button in the bottom right. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look at pigment versus dye inks. So you may have been in the market or looking for a printer or you may have just bought a printer and come across dye or pigment inks when people are talking about the specifications of different printers. Now, what these basically mean is there's two ink types. There's a dye based ink and then there's a pigment based ink. Now the dye based inks are usually a little bit more cost effective and also not so archival. So there's a little bit of a balancing act there. We'll talk a little bit more about like, the pros and cons in a bit. But the pigment based inks are suspended minerals in water so they don't generally go off. So it makes them perfectly archival so they last well over a hundred years. If archivability is something you're interested in then it's well worth looking at pigment based ink printers. Now the Pro 1000 here that sat next to me this is a pigment printer. It has 12 inks and 80 mil cartridges and is absolutely fantastic. Massive colour gamut also it has grey inks in there as well. One thing that dye ink printers don't have so much is the grey inks or the tones of grey ink as well. So generally you may see people out there or online talking about pigment based printers being the best printers for black and white printing. However, saying that, the new um, Canon Pro 200 and also the Epson um, ET8550, they are dye based printers but they have grey inks in there, so they produce perfect black and whites with the correct profile or black and white mode being used. So don't be put off by dye inks in the case of black and white, just make sure it has grey inks in there because that will make a big difference. Also, dye inks could fall down a little bit with matte papers, but the manufacturers have addressed this by putting a matte black ink in there and it's usually a pigment based matte black ink included. I know it is on the Pro 200 which produces beautiful matte prints. A big advantage to dye inks though is the vibrancy you get. If you print on a dye based printer on say luster gloss brighter kind of papers you will get this lovely rich colour and it just pops off the page to you. It almost looks almost a bit 3D. -y. When you compare it to the pigment equivalent, it almost looks a little bit flat. Um, the pigment inks just look a little bit flat. So there's something to bear in mind. But the big elephant in the room is archivability. Dye inks will fade over time. Now, Canon are saying, and Epson actually, are saying that their prints will last in kind of average conditions, on a wall, not in direct sunlight, for around 30, 40 years. If it's in direct sunlight, that can go down to years, like one or two years, before it starts to fade. If you take a little bit of care with that print though and put it behind say UV glass to protect it and make sure it's, it is really out of the way so no light can come on it, direct sunlight can kind of go, come onto the print, you will eat that out a little bit so you'll probably get 60 or 70 years. Now, now that sounds like a bad thing. However, there are many, many photographers that I can think of in the 70s or 80s that used a dye ink process and their prints are still around today. It depends on how you are displaying them, like I said, if you use UV glass, or if you are, if they are constantly on display. So a lot of photographers will keep, will display it for a few weeks in the gallery, put it back down again, put it into storage and things. So they will last a lot longer. 
Canon also say with their new inks that they've released for the Pro 200, these inks will last well over 100 years. If they're in, say, an acid-free box, like an album or portfolio box. So they will last a long, long time. But saying that, dye inks still cannot be classified as fine art or gicle. To make a gicle fine art print, it has to be pigment ink and it has to be on a fine art tested paper. All our papers here at Photospeed are tested, so they are classified as fine art. So combine that with pigment inks and you will have that fine art gicle print that you can sell and advertise as fine art. If you're using a dye based printer, you shouldn't really be saying that. Now, pigment based inks will last well over 100 years without you even having to do anything to them. I think probably the paper will degrade before the ink in a way. <laughs> um, I haven't tested that obviously, but we test the papers for light fastness and things um, as part of what we have to do to classify our papers as fine art and they don't fade. They can't fade them really that very well. So again, if you want to be classified as fine art and have that little stamp on your website that says, I produce fine art prints, then you will have to use a pigment based printer. Now there's loads on the market out there. You don't have to spend massive amounts. For a dye based printer, you can start from as little as 200 pounds. For a pigment based printer, you're probably looking around the 600 pound mark as kind of the entry level, which is probably like a P700 from Epson or um, a Pro 300 from Canon. So there is a quite price gap. Also, the ink is a little bit more expensive as well because it's archival and it's a little bit more expensive to produce, I, I, I assume. I don't know that for a fact. So I hope that kind of explains what both those two ink types are and the advantages and disadvantages of it both. The best thing to do is, is if you can, like you can do here at Photospeed, if we're at a show or an event, we will more than likely have printers with us and we're more than happy to print a print for you if you're looking for a printer so you can see a comparison between the two. We always hope that you'll come back to us and buy that printer from us, obviously, but we are here to help and kind of you can have a comparison as well. But basically, to just sum up, dye inks give lovely, vibrant colours. Pigments will give you full archivability and perfect black and whites. So it depends on what you want and what your need is. And also your budget as well, because like a Pro 1000 here, they are not cheap. I, have, I completely appreciate that. Some of the smaller dye based printers are a lot cheaper and also produce amazing prints as well. But you are just sacrificing that little bit of archivability. So I hope that helps a little bit and helps kind of explain the two ink types and what they do. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Also for any US viewers out there, don't forget that we have a flat rate shipping fee of $9. Please bear in mind you will be liable for any import duties and taxes in your own state or province. So please bear that in mind before you order. Okay, well, again, I hope that's been useful and have an amazing week and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.